first things first, I'm the realest. Realest. Drop this and let the whole world. Hey, Anna, I think the spaghetti's ready. Did you know cooking is an example of thermochemistry? Thermochemistry is a branch of thermodynamics that focuses on the heat released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. Wow, Thomas, where'd you learn that? Honors chemistry, of course. Wow, I want to learn. Let's go. First, we must learn about the different kinds of energy. Two kinds are potential and kinetic energy. Oh, I know what potential energy it is. It is the stored energy in an object when it's at rest and has the potential to move. That's right. And kinetic energy is... I know. <laughs> kinetic energy is the energy of an object due to motion. It depends on the mass and velocity of the object. You guys remember a lot. Wait! Our dinner! I forgot to turn off the stove! Wait, you know... That's an example of an exothermic process. I'm not really sure what that is. Well, in an exothermic process, the energy is released as the process proceeds and the surroundings become warmer. Wait, does that mean that turning the stove on is an example of an exothermic process? Certainly. Wait, what if the surroundings become colder? Wait! When the surroundings become colder, it means that energy is being absorbed in the endothermic process. Some phase changes happen uh, due to an endothermic process occurring. During phase changes, the temperature remains constant. Take a look at this phase diagram. Hey, check it out! The ice is melting! That's an example of a phase change, Anna. It's going from a solid state to a liquid state. After some time, it'll go from a liquid state to a gas state. I wonder what amount of heat is required to raise the temperature of one gram of this water by one degree Celsius. Hmm, what an interesting question, Anna. Yes, that's very interesting. We can acquire this by using the specific heat formula. Q is the amount of heat gained or lost. M is the mass of your substance. C is a specific heat. And T is the temperature change. Cool! But I don't fully understand. Hey Thomas, can you show us an example problem? When 0.816 grams of NH4NO3 was added to 150 grams of water in a cup, the temperature dropped by 0.413 degrees Celsius. The heat capacity of H2O is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Assume the specific heat of the solution equals that of pure H2O and the kilometer neither absorbs nor leaks heat. The molar heat of the solution of solid NH4NO3 is heat. The molar heat of the solution of solid NH4NO3 is A. 25.4 kilojoules per mole B. Negative 0.254 kilojoules per mole C negative 2.54 kilojoules per mole, D, 0.254 kilojoules per mole, or E, 2.54 kilojoules per mole. First, we use the specific heat uh, formula, Q equals m -tag. Now, as we read from the problem, we are going to plug in the values. But one thing you should notice is that the specific heat of the solution equals that of pure H2O. Therefore, we can disregard the mass of NH4NO3 for now. Therefore, we will plug in 150 grams for M. And for C, our specific heat, we plug in the specific heat or specific heat capacity of H2O, which is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Next, as it says, the temperature dropped by 0 0.413 degrees Celsius, we plug that in for delta T. Now, with the calculator, we can solve for the amount of joules. The answer you get is 258.951 joules. Now, remember how I said to disregard the NH4NO3? Now we change that, or the amount of mass it was given, into moles. We get 0 0.01019 moles. 
at NH4 and R3. Now, as the problem states <laughs> in the multiple choice, all the answers are in kilojoules per mole. But the answer we have for Q is in joules. So we divide the answer of joules by moles first. This gives us the answer of 2, 5, 4, 1, 2 joules per mole. But the answers are in kilojoules per mole, so therefore you divide that answer by 1,000. With that, we get the answer 25.4 kilojoules per mole. Anna, all the gossip in the halls is about Hess's law. Isn't that different? Teach us that, Thomas. I want to be up to date. Use Hess's law when you are going from a particular set of reactants to a particular set of products. The change in enthalpy is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or a series of steps. Calculate delta H for the combustion of methane, CH4. In the third equation, we have one H2O, while in the master equation, we have two. Therefore, we have to multiply the whole equation by 2, including the delta H. Now that we have that done, we can cancel out anything that are on opposite sides of the reaction. So, C, we can cancel out. Um, and then the two H2s we have, we can cancel out. And therefore, we're left with the reaction of CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus 2H2O. And then to calculate the delta H, we just add all these up together and we should get negative 890.36 kilojoules. Wow, honors chemistry sure has taught me a lot. Yeah, if I had a final coming up, I would be so ready. There they go, off to apply their chemistry knowledge. theory, Mr. Taylor? That's a good point, but what about the dimensions? Yes, yes, you're very smart. Major funding by us chem kids. To help the other struggling honors chem kids out there in the world. <laughs> and special thanks to David H. Koch. I got it! <laughs> Thomas. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Hess's law. No. <laughs> Sarah, shut up. <laughs>